Hello, hello. All right, well, um, before we officially begin today, um, I want you all to know that I'm gonna be sharing some stories that, to be completely honest, may be a little bit difficult to hear. Um, if anyone in the room is recovering from an eating disorder or is unable to hear stories of starvation, purging, um, I would like to offer a trigger warning before we begin. I want you to know that if that's you, I understand and I love you and I see you and I fully respect your decision to leave the room at this time and to maybe watch this talk at a more appropriate time for you. All right, well, now you're super excited about what I have to say today, huh? <laughs> uh, we're going to begin today the same way that I begin every session on the Become Project app. We're gonna take a moment to simply check in with how we feel. On the screens here, you'll see a list of words that I give to my clients before and after every single session. And you can choose one of these words from the list, or you could pick a word that better describes how you're feeling. So like, for example, if I was going to pick a word right now, I'd be like really, really nervous, and that would be my word, and we're gonna take that word, hold on to it for a moment, feel it, understand what it means to you, and then let it go. I've found that taking time to check in with how you feel is a really good way to know if you're giving your body, your soul, your mind, your spirit, the things that it needs. And that's something that I learned the hard way. I have been working in fitness for about 12 years now. For 12 years, I've been teaching our bodies how to move. And I've been a lead instructor, a studio director, a teacher trainer. I've taught all over the country with full wait list. And now I've started my own brand. But for eight of those 12 years, I was living with an eating disorder. It's like here I was, right, the epitome of health. And I was secretly starving myself or hanging my head over a toilet in fear of food. I was living in Los Angeles at the time. I had a toxic boss at work and a toxic relationship at home. And I was at the height of my eating disorder and every morning I would start my day with a sugary dessert, usually a Rice Krispie treat for whatever reason, and three shots of espresso. And that's all the fuel that I would give myself for the day. And one day I went into work, I taught my morning block of classes and then I started on my task as the studio manager and I started to feel hungry. And you have to understand at that time, the sensation of hunger was an absolutely terrifying feeling for me. And so I decided that I would walk to the market next door and I would buy some grapes. And when I got these grapes, it was like hunger and malnutrition took over and I started eating handfuls of grapes very rapidly. And the entire time that I was eating them, I was promising myself like grapes aren't fattening and this time you're gonna keep them down. And within 30 minutes, I was violently ill. I didn't have to make myself throw up this time because they came up on their own. And I will never forget holding on to the toilet and uncontrollably purging and crying at the fact that my body could no longer handle even the simplest of food. I was hungry and I was starving and I couldn't eat. And I think at this point, like most people would maybe take a sick day and go home and rest and recover. But for me, I kept thinking my afternoon classes are starting and like the show must go on. So I peeled myself off the bathroom floor and I splashed some cold water on my face and I turned on a smile for my clients who were arriving. And then for the next two hours, I coached people on how to flatten their stomach and trim their thighs and prepare for bikini season, which was right around the corner. And I would love to stand here and tell you that I felt ashamed by my deceit, right? Like being a fitness instructor who couldn't stomach grapes, but I didn't. In fact, like I thought that it was normal in my mind, you don't go to a dentist with crooked teeth and you don't go to a fat fitness instructor or so I thought. The theme of this conference is showing up. 
which I think is a really interesting choice of words because you can show up for someone in a supportive way and you can also show someone up in a divisive way. And I realize now that I was trying to show someone up by being the skinniest person in the room, but I wasn't showing up for how I felt. Right? Like, yes, I was showing up for how I looked, but I wasn't showing up for what was going on in here, what the true feeling was. And in turn, I was teaching that to my clients. You know, the whole idea of working out and fitness is kind of an interesting concept to me because clients will come and they'll be like, you know, I want abs like Jada and I want an ass like JLo and I want arms like Jen, but they don't get those things in one session. They don't get those things in 10 sessions. And if we're going to be real about it, they probably never get those things because at the end of the day, our bodies are uniquely ours, right? And they don't belong to Jada and they don't belong to JLo and they don't belong to Jen. And if you hired somebody to come and clean your house, and when they left, your house was still dirty, it's very unlikely that you would hire them again. So my thought is like, why do we give fitness instructors all these chances? And I think the reason is because we, the instructor, evoke a feeling in people. The workout is surface, it's what's on the outside, but it's the experience that's internal. The feeling of strength the feeling of accomplishment, the feeling of having someone who believes in you, the endorphin release, the ability to feel powerful even if it's only for a short amount of time. That is the reason why you come back for more. So now the question is, why do we stop exercising? And I think that that's directly correlated to the motive. So it's like, I feel so fat, I have to work out. And that motive came from a negative place of self-worth. And when it comes from a negative place, it creates a sense of dread. And if you dread something for long enough, I promise you won't want to do it. I'm really proud to stand here and say that about four years ago, my journey to a healthier self began. And I started by tossing my old rule book and throwing away my bathroom scale. And the first thing I did was I gave myself permission to eat dairy and meat and sugar and carbs and even gluten and all of these things, right? I ate. I stopped working out with the motive to lose weight, and I started working out with the motive to feel clear-headed and to feel centered and to feel empowered. And slowly, my mindset began to shift. I stopped trying to be body positive, and instead, I worked to become body neutral. Meaning some days we feel good about our body, some days we feel bad about our body, but all days we respect our body. So let me ask you this. Think about the last time you worked out. What was your motive? And did it come from a place of guilt? And then when was the last time that you looked at yourself in the mirror and you didn't see something that needs fixing. Body dysmorphia does not discriminate. It affects people of all sizes, all colors, all genders, all socioeconomic backgrounds. And it's important to know that we have been fed an idea for generations that says in order to be valued as people, we must look a certain way. And the saddest thing is that no matter how much we alter our appearance, we will always find something else that needs fixing. Because that's how they design it. It's designed so that you cannot win. Together, we have the power to change that. We literally have the power to defy beauty standards by simply celebrating who we already are. At the end of each Become session, we do two things. 
first, we once again circle back to how we're feeling. And I wanna say that sometimes the feeling may be the same, sometimes it may be different, sometimes it may be better, sometimes it may be worse. What's important is that it's honest. And then the second thing we do is in an act of self-love, we give our shoulder a kiss. So right now, I would like for you to once again choose a word, whether it's one of the words that you see or a word of your own. Take it, hold on to it for a moment, and then all together, kiss your shoulder, and then let it go. Thank you so much.